This is Julie Harland and I'm going to do a little demonstration tutorial how you could use Desmos. So again you could just start at google.com, go up to the search bar, press desmos.com, desmos.com and you should get something like this and just press start graphing. Now over here on the left is where we would put in some equations. For instance, so like, let's say we want to graph some lines. And over on the right is where the graphs will be shown. Now if you notice, it just depends on the size of the screen what you see over here. So it looks like it's going from negative 10 to 10 on the x-axis and from around negative 7 to 7 almost on the y-axis. But there's actually extra lines in between here. If you want, you can go to graph settings and you could change this. So let's say I want the x-axis to go in between negative 15 and positive 15 and I just want to see one mark for each. You just put step one and I can actually see the marks. I noticed a minute ago, I think it was showing without that. Same thing for the y-axis. Let's say, you notice how this is a wider graph? So if I want to keep it, hmm, kind of consistent, maybe I'll only go, if this is from negative 15 to 15, that looks maybe negative 10 to 10. So how about if I do negative 10 to 10? And again, I'm just going to put step one. Just want to let you see what this looks like. Notice like on the x-axis, one unit doesn't look exactly the same as on the y-axis. So, you know, just be careful of that. All right. So what we can do is put in an equation over here. So let's say we want to just put in y equals Let's do, how about, two-thirds x. And remember, we want to put the x next to the fraction bar. So this is the line y equals two-thirds x. Now, here's some interesting things you can do. You can say, well, what if I had the same equation? Now, you can just copy and paste it if you want. Copy, paste it. But what happens if I say plus one? What's it look like? Hmm. So in blue, that's y equals two-thirds x plus one. Let's take it again. Let's make a new one. I press on, click on three. And how about if I do two x, two-thirds x minus two, for instance. I have this green one. So hopefully what you start noticing is that all of these have the same slope, but they just have different y-intercepts. So for the red graph, it, the y-intercept is zero, zero. For the blue graph, the y-intercept is zero, one. And for the green graph, the y-intercept is 0, negative 2. Now another thing you can do is put in a variable. So I could put in plus a. Now what does that mean? It wants me to pick a number for what I want to put in here. So I can call this a slider. So let's say, see where it says a equals 0? I could just say, what, what if a is 0? That's like y equals 2 thirds x. Zero. There it is. And if I want to see what it looks like when a equals 1, I could just change this and put 1, and there is y equals 2 thirds x plus 1. Or I could put negative 2, that was the other one we did, y equals 2 thirds x minus 2. Or check this out. If you want to slide this, it tells you what happens when a changes. So this is kind of cool. So I could see like when a is negative 4, that would be y equals 2 thirds x minus 4. Notice it still has a slope of 2 thirds, but it has a y-intercept of negative 4. And this shows you that when you're changing the y-intercept here, the slope stays exactly the same. All right, so that's one thing you could do. Let's do something else. Let's get rid of this a. And let's just do plus 2, for instance. And let's see what happens if we change the slope. So there we have two-thirds x, what would it look like if I had one-third x instead? So I'm going to change this from two-thirds, watch fast, one-third, ha! Huh. Not as steep. How about if I change this to one-sixth? Smaller frac, uh, oops, I changed that to six instead of one-sixth. Let's change it to one-sixth, which is what I meant to do. One-sixth, there we go, that's what it looks like. 
the y-intercept is staying the same. So let's make this a slider. Let's call it m, okay, because we're used to that, y equals m we have to. That's what it looks like when the slope is 1. The y-intercept is 2. What's it look like when we keep that y-intercept and I change my slope to 2? It gets steeper. What if I change the slope to 3? It gets even steeper, etc. And in fact, you can slide to see what happens. See how m is getting bigger and the line is getting very steep. Now if I go to the left, let's go down to like 0. There it is. There's a the slope of 0. We've got the horizontal line. As soon as I move it and I get a negative number, I now have the whole line slanting downward. All right. So those are some other cool things you could do on Desmos to see what's going on with lines. And again, you can get rid of this. And if you don't say what M is, you're not going to see anything. So if I change it now, I'll put in, hmm, wonder what it looks like y equals negative 3x plus 2. There it is. Now let's do another line that people sometimes have trouble with. How about just x equals 4. Ah, there's that vertical line. Remember a vertical line has a slope of 0. There is, I'm sorry I said that backwards, the vertical line does not have a slope. It's called undefined because you can't put it in the form y equals mx plus b. There's no y to solve for. So this has a slope of, an, there's an undefined slope, and it's a vertical line. And again, you could slide and say, well, you know, this is the black, right? There's x equals negative 6, x equals negative 5. It goes through the order pair negative 4, 0, but it's a vertical line, and so on. So that's a cool thing. Let's do that up here with y. Let's say we want to get y equals a number, like how about y equals 5? We would have the horizontal line, and that has a slope of 0. And again, you could slide this if you want. Right, there's y equals 2. You could change this. What's it look like when y equals negative 9? You could see it's down there, etc. So you can, you know, discover a lot of things by using Desmos.